Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. It's me Vinod here again. And today I want to talk about something I promised to speak about a few videos ago, which is about talking about the FMC sector as an investor. There are three main companies which I wanted to hit on today, which is the ITC, the Imami, and the Dabur. And because these companies are big FMGC companies, I thought we'll talk about these and compare and contrast. And hopefully by the end of the video, it gives you some clarity on why you should consider what you should consider. As always, I'm not like my brother. I don't try and give immediate answers and I don't point you where you should go. I more try to park some curiosity in you and get you going as on the road as an investor and think about investing and not just picking stocks based on someone's input. I do understand it's very frustrating to watch me ramble on and not at the end of the video say, go do this or go do that. I do understand that. My intention is not that. I'm here to learn with you and in the process, hopefully you learn something from me and we both move forward together in our understanding and make good investments in the long term. So that being said, my caveat, I'm not recommending any of these three companies. I'm not saying you should buy any one. At the end of the video, if you make your own considerations, I'm happy for you for making those considerations, but it's not from me. I'm not trying to tell you or push you in any one direction or any one company because I'm not a SEBI registered advisor, nor do I claim to be of any sort. These are purely my thought processes and my own personal investing style, which I do and which I've learned from my brother Anand. And I'm trying to share that with you. Anyway, that said, let me jump into the main consideration. Now, ITC, FMDG cigarettes. We all know about ITC. They're the leaders in the domestic cigarette market and they have a market share over 80 percent in cigarettes alone but in fmgc and others they have 25 mother brands that spread across multiple sectors that's in packaged foods like ashirvada sunfeast bingo ep noodles candyman and minto and in personal care they have salvon and fiamma and vivel and uh, Puria. in stationery they have classmate papercraft and apparels of course they have wls and Agrabatis, they have Mangal Deep and AIM matches. In hotels, they have 127 hotels in 70 locations in the country and paper port and paper manufacturing agri business, the second largest exporters of agri products from the country. And of course, they have some IT too. The next company we're going to be looking at is Dabur. Dabur is fourth largest FMZG company in India and the world's largest Ayurvedic and natural healthcare company with a portfolio of over 250 herbal and Ayurvedic products. And home and personal care contributes around 47% of their uh, revenue. And in the home and personal care, they have brands like Odelin, Sunny Fresh, Odomos. And in personal care, the company has is operating in hair care products and oral care and skin care and home care and hygiene products. They're one of the old brands in India and is one of the famous ones. And we all remember the Dabur ads from our childhood where the old man will be breaking a walnut with his teeth or biting into a sugar cane, a raw sugar cane with his bare teeth and inspiring us to use Dabur toothpaste and hope that we also manage to have that kind of strength in our gums and our teeth. They're also now present in healthcare, which is around 36% of their revenue. And uh, they have health supplements and digestive and over-the-counter medicine they do. And that's where the Ayurvedic is also. The Dabur honey portfolio is quite large and they launched it, but the government did claim it is fake honey and Dabur has gone back and said, no, it's not fake. So that is also there, which is hanging on Dabur as a question mark, which as investors, we have to keep an eye on. And food and beverages, this comes in on 17%. They operate in fruit juices and that is the real and real active brands, which we all know about. And uh, culinary pastes also they do, Dabur paste. The third in this trifecta, which we're going to talk about today, is Imami. Imami is one of the leading companies. They're not as large as Starbur. They're much smaller, but they're a very focused brand and they work on personal healthcare segment. And they also have a very niche market in Ayurvedic segment. The company's portfolio has over 250 products based on Ayurvedic formulations. And Boro Plus is theirs. Navratna Oil is theirs. And Fair and Handsome is theirs. Zandu Balm, Kesh King and Zandu Faram Shikstra and Mento Plus Balm. A lot of people will not know these are all brands owned by Imami until I said so because most of these brands which I spoke about are market leaders on their own right and brand recall on their own right. And it's not because of Imami these brands are. These brands have their own uh, loyal following, especially Zandu. So now let's talk about how revenue is split between local, which is India, and global revenue. 
Well, if you look at into ITC, ITC is uh, Indian revenues, about 70 to 80 percent of ITC's revenues comes from India, while the rest is from export. While Dabur, on the other hand, is the one which is different in these three, because Dabur, 22 percent is in Asia, 12 percent is in Europe, and Africa constitutes about 24 percent and Middle East 26 percent. So if you see this, Dabur is a much larger company in terms of global reach. They have a strong global brand and they are in multiple markets and multiple segments. And that is something very unique in an FMGC company in India, especially when you compare it to ITC, which is such a big giant. Then you have Imami. Imami's domestic market is 83%, which is up there almost with ITC, but international market is around 17%. In terms of distribution, ITC has the largest distribution network compared to Dabur and Imami, and they have ITC warehouses completely spread completely throughout India, and they are very dominant. There's no need to go on hammering that because that is evident. The moat, now this is the interesting thing what like Warren Buffett talks about. The moat is what protects the company from a takeover, what it protects it from the competition, and allows the company to thrive within its own circle. So what is a moat which we're talking about in ITC? It doesn't restrict itself only to cigarettes and FMGC. It caters to all kinds of sectors. Even in FMGC, there are types that are entering in Ayurveda now, and they're trying to pick up on their export segment. In terms of Dabur, Dabur is a very old brand, and their moat is their brand itself. And the way they combat someone like ITC is they have first mover advantage in global markets compared to ITC. They're already present, like I said, in all over Asia, America, Europe, Africa, Middle East. Middle East is a very large market for them. And ITC is yet to make headway into those markets. So even if ITC gives them a run for their money by entering Ayurvedic-related products, health products in India to Dabur, where majority of their revenue comes from, like I said, Dabur's 47% uh, of their revenue comes from personal and healthcare it constitutes around 36%. So even if ITC decides to invade that space, Daba has a huge uh, market outside India, which gives it a very solid moat. The third one is Imami. In terms of Imami, Imami is the smallest of the three companies. It has a market capitalization of only 19,000 crores, while Daba is sitting at a market capitalization of almost 94,000 crores. And ITC, of course, no need to mention, has a market capitalization of 528,000 uh, crores. So Imami is as the smallest out of the three of them, but Imami is ratio if you see is at 26.8 which is very close to ITC and the thing which Imami has got best going for it is it is almost debt free there's no long-term debt in Imami right now in the balance sheet which is a good thing to have if you're a very small company in these kind of markets while Daba does have debt Daba is trading at a PE of 53.1 which is much higher compared to the others so this is the outlay which I wanted to give you so this is how I usually start looking at a sector. So, I mean, me and Anand discuss, let's say, you know, he'll tell me, let's talk about FMGC. He says, what's happening in FMGC? And me and Albin and the rest of us will go out and we'll pick our companies and we'll try and look into it and then we'll come back. Then Anand will go through whatever information we give to him and then he'll come back with his feedback and express his views on it and tell us to go research some more and come back. Usually this process goes on for a couple of weeks before we come back and then Anand will finally say, okay, this looks good, this looks interesting. And then Anand himself will deep dive into the few companies he decides to deep dive. So this kind of gives you an insight on how we decide to get around to seeing what company we see long-term yield in, long-term growth in. And I hope this kind of an insight helps you in your research and your efforts of investing and moving forward. Thanks for watching the videos, guys, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.